I'm working on a book um, entitled uh, Beyond Reductionism, Reinventing the Sacred. Uh, I think that this is terribly important. The, 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 the contemporary world, uh, certainly the first world, is divided between secular humanists who are really essentially atheists or agnostics um, who believe in science. We are children of the Enlightenment and of Newton. Um, on the one hand, and those who believe in a transcendent God, uh, ranging from the Christian fundamentalists in the United States to the Islamic fundamentalists, all Abrahamic people, and around the world. Um, these two civilizations are in conflict with one another. Both sides are paying the price. Um, in particular, uh, the secular humanists, I among them, who don't believe in God, uh, have lost our spiritualism. If we're spiritual at all, it's sort of in the privacy of our bedroom and we're told that it's foolish. Um, the two cultures that C.P. Snow talked about, the sciences and the humanities, are badly split. Um, we do not have a global ethic. We are reduced to consumers, that which appalls the Islamic world. Um, and I think these are terribly important issues. And, and, and beyond that, reductionism, which is the dominant scientific worldview that we've grown up with for the past 350 years has no place for humanity in it. It is driven by physics, which I love, but in physics there are only happenings. Uh, we are agents. We act. When we act, our actions are subsets of what happens. Uh, we act. We change the world. Once there are agents, there's value. Um, it's food or poison to a bacterium. It's a good wine or a bad wine uh, to you or me. So, in, an, in a world that encompasses emergence, and beyond that is part of what uh, I hope we have a chance to talk about, a radical incapacity to say how the biosphere will evolve, and a radical incapacity to say how technology will evolve, uh, we are in a, an endlessly creative biosphere, and human culture and human technology. So I think a new scientific worldview, real science, is just beginning to be visual, visualizable. And in that new worldview, we, we, we are members of a creative universe that we help co-create. So I want to ask, is it more extraordinary to imagine that God created it all in an act of creation 6,000 years ago? Or is it more awesome to say that everything around us, from the solar system to galaxies, to life, to the intricacies of a cell, to the human economic system that's exploded from a few thousand goods and services to 10 billion in the past 50,000 years, uh, to lunch on the terrace with your friend, that all of this has come into existence without a creator as the natural evolution of this universe. I think the latter is more astonishing. And I find myself wanting to say it's God enough for me, and I hope it's God enough for many, without saying that there's a transcendent God, it's just reality. But I want to use the God word, I want to use God to mean this creative universe that we're members of. And what's at stake is a conversation that I think needs to be a global conversation, that, 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 it, that for, the human, for the humanists among us, for the human secular Humanist, secular humanists among us, um, heals these wounds, brings the sciences and humanities back together again, because science can't predict what the biosphere is going to go do. It really can't. It can't predict what technology is going to do. It can't. That means being rational is broader than science. Finding out about the world is broader than science. So we need Shakespeare and Einstein. So on the one hand, secular humanists uh, need to have things healed, and we need a global ethic. And I think that global ethic is oneness with all of life and uh, a responsibility for the planet. A an interesting thing here is that if you take Aboriginal people who have to kill animals to eat, virtually always they give thanks to the spirit of the animal for giving up its life so that they can eat. Where does that come from? And I think it comes from the sense that life itself is sacred. On the religious side, um, 
I don't expect that people will give up their traditions, nor should they. They're, these are traditions that are thousands of years old. But it, it may be that we can come to a common agreement on some fundamentals of value to all of us as integrated human beings, integrating science and value and awe and reverence around which we can live because we really need to create what might be called a transnational mythic structure for a global civilization that's emerging.